little bit now. Uh, and I am running a little bit behind schedule this morning. I'm just tired. Uh, da -da -da -da. Make sure I have everything set up and good to go. Yes, 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 that looks great. Uh, so we're gonna be working on a project that we've been working on for a little bit now. And it is a uh, basically a chatbot version of the New York Times dialect quiz, which I haven't pulled up in a couple streams, so I'm gonna show you. Um, and the New York Times dialect quiz is like this, and it's a bunch of multiple choice questions, and you say what the answer is for you, and you go through and you answer a bunch of questions, and at the end, um, the quiz will return a result that, oh, you speak, like the top three cities for you are, um, there we go. <laughs> the top three cities for you are, they gotta be cities in the US, so like Mobile, Alabama, Nashville, Tennessee, and Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, so that's the general idea of the project that we're working on. And we got to the point where we had our system mostly working. Uh, we've been working on getting Raza X set up the last couple turns, last couple turns, last couple streams. Um, and it is set up, but there's a persistent helm issue that I have not gotten to the bottom of uh, that I've been working on a little, a little off screen as well. Um, and it might be a Windows bug is what I'm narrowing it down to um, based on, on other people who have encountered similar things. I don't think anyone solved it yet. So. Uh, that's my mystery to work with. But in the meantime, if you have been tuning into the stream for a while, you might have uh, noticed that we had a uh, classification from our, our classifier and we uh, got nonsense answers. <laughs> so they did not seem to make any sense. Um, and I think part of the reason why that is the case is that uh, we had the data as like a table that had numbers in it and each number corresponded to an answer for the specific question and I assumed that they were indexing from, I think I assumed they were indexing from one and then um, mapped from the question order in the original quiz, basically. So I, I took the, the encoded file and tried to decode it. And I think I did a, a bad job. <laughs> I think I did it very, very wrong, uh, which is why we were getting nonsense answers out. So I reached out to the original study author, Bert Vox, uh, and he sent me the data dictionary. So this week, Today, uh, there will be no live streaming on Friday. I'll announce that more broadly. Um, pretty much everybody's out of the office and that includes me. <laughs> uh, what I'm saying. So today we are going to be working on taking that data dictionary and um, using the new data, getting it all good to go, and then um, taking that and using that as input to the classifier. I will be shocked if we get to the point where we would rebuild the classifier today. Uh, I imagine we will run into unforeseen errors during the data cleaning because that that's how data cleaning works. I'll get some coffee in me. Mm, I've got my coffee mug. And when I first posted about, I think when I first got that, I, I mentioned it on Twitter and someone was like, that's not how New Yorkers say coffee. Uh, and my internal response was, Sure, but that's that's how I say coffee. It definitely has an open O for me. Uh, all right, so let's check out the data. I haven't really delved very much into it. Um, yeah. Deep, deep. What am I doing? Uh... Hmm. All right, none of that's what I wanted. Uh, so I'm just gonna look over here in the, the data explorer, which I think is probably a little bit small. I'll move me, whoop, there we go. Uh, so what we have here is, here, raw dialect survey data is where we have the data. Uh, so let's check responses, too large to open in the source editor. Okay, so that's probably the big one. Um, 
and all the user information is also pretty large and I'm not going to open that just in case there's PII in there. Uh, and then questions. Okay. Oh, this is helpful. So this is the order of the questions, which it looks like is different as well. Oh, oh, so many mysteries have been revealed. Okay. So that also would definitely make our classifier, uh, be funky. Um, hi Robbie. Thank you. Uh, Robbie said nice mug. I think so too. Even though it is white, so it picks up um, a little bit of the green screen reflection. All right. So, this is the ID of the question, the text of the question. I don't think this is the text of the question. I think this is like the little, you know, way of referring to the question. Uh, allows other, so this would probably be like a fill in the blank, whether or not they have that allows comment and then image. Okay. Um, so this is very helpful because you will notice that Oh, maybe they're not. Maybe they're not. The indexes are just off by one because humans count from one and computers count from zero. Uh, and I have very few deeply held uh, computer science opinions, but I think indexing from zero, like I know why it's a good idea on the computer side, but it's not intuitive for humans. Humans count from one. Uh, okay, so that's very helpful. So. It is very possible that our questions were in the wrong order in the data that we checked out. So well, that's a thing that we should watch out for. And then choices. Um, oh. Okay, so this is the question ID. Here are seven questions. Uh, Mr. KZ says, hello, what are you working on? So we are working on um, data preparation for a classifier that we've already built, but the classifier gave nonsense answers. Uh, and I think the reason that they gave nonsense answers is because we did the data preparation wrong because we didn't have sufficient information. So now we do have sufficient information, hopefully, uh, and we're gonna try and make it better. Okay, so Okay, so here are the possible answers to the question. This is the ID of the answer. This is the ID of the question. All right, and then these are the answers. Ah, okay. So my, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so my assumption that I talked about a little bit was most of the questions have an other option. And I'd assumed that other was being assigned to zero and it looks like it is not. So uh, all of our answers are sort of like off by a little bit, which is uh, not great, I would say. Uh, all right, so that's very helpful. The big problem here is that these answers are not the answers that we have in the quiz. So mapping from these answers to the answers that we have allowed is going to be, I think, a little bit of a, uh, uh, a struggle, especially because, so this bit right here, these answers are in IPA, which is the International Phonetic Alphabet, like the mug, coffee. Um, and as you can see, the font rendering is not good. Mm, and also the encoding might be off because this looks like one and a half characters maybe, um, which suggests maybe a UTF mismatch. Um, yeah, this is expecting like UTF 16 and it's actually UTF eight you might end up with. Well, no, you wouldn't end up with half a character. Um, but yeah, something's funky for sure. Um, so there's going to be some work to do there, which I'm looking forward to. <laughs> no, it'll be fine. I'm just, I'm just a, a tired puppy. All right. Uh, so that's the questions and then the responses and then the read me, which I probably should have opened first. <laughs> All right. Uh, 
Da, 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 contains 47,000 responses. Hello, uh, Negroho? So if I'm saying that incorrectly. Uh, questions and responses. Okay, and then we have it also in a CSV format, which is real nice. Uh, very helpful. Okay. Um, yeah, let's take a peek at the responses file. Uh, which we're not going to be able to load in 100% on account of it being um, big. <laughs> well, no, we can probably load it into memory. We're not going to be able to load it into the little preview. So uh, let's start a new uh, a new R file. So I'm just call this data cleaning for full data set, just so I have it for myself. Oops. Uh, cleaning full dot r. Right, excellent. Uh, yes. Uh, Pranav says, uh, <laughs> Rachel should add code, a uh, life code in her upcoming uh, women in NLP talk. Yeah, I'm still working on that. So uh, I'm giving a talk at Women in NLP Hyderabad on the 28th at, I believe, 10 p 10 a.m. 10 a.m. my time. I can double check that. Um, so tune in if you are interested. Yeah, there might be some life coding. I got it. It's a yeah, work in progress. And I just, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm just tired, y'all. I'm just tired. <laughs> For no discernible reason. Like I've been sleeping good, I've been eating good, I'm just uh, exhausted all the time. <laughs> all right, reading in the data set. How are we gonna do that? I have forgotten R. I have not. Tidyverse, all right. So let's load in the Tidyverse library and then we're going to call this raw responses, I think, makes sense. Uh, yes, me, and then uh, I think we actually need to go down a level into what did I call it? Raw dialect survey data. Yeah, and then responses.txt. Uh, yep, not the readme, and that should just work. Nice. Wait. Hold up. Uh, all right. Uh, it looks like it's tab separated. So I'm going to, I can tell that because here the columns is just one string and not multiple columns. So that's a problem. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Robbie says, are you coming to open data science conference in Bangalore? It's not on my radar. Um, maybe, I don't know. I've just been, Weirdly unmotivated lately. Um, da, da, da. Uh, Kulip said, will Rasa be available as a conda package at some point? That's a good question. So right now we're available as a pip package. Um, I don't know. If it's something that you care deeply about, I would file an issue for it. Um, and if it's something that you are willing to maintain, you, know, you take it on. We're open source. Uh, Pranav says, can you give a virtual tour of Seattle during the ACL week? I mean, maybe, but it would be like a slideshow because I'm not gonna be going anywhere. So we're, uh, I think it's like until the end of July that the current schedule is that uh, restrictions on movement will be in place, so. I'll do a slideshow though, why not? That sounds fun. Oh. All right, let's give that a shot. All right, have I forgotten the syntax for this? Maybe, let's pop that up. What, what do you got? Da, 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 blah, 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 blah. Uh, delim, excuse me, it is not a uh, sep. Is it this direction with the slash? No. Read a limited real CSV. Blah 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 blah. Call types null. 
Oh, you can here. Okay, so I think it actually needs to be read delim instead of read CSV. All right, columns.default. Let's see what the head looks like. Oh, I'm directly in front of it. Whip. <laughs> there we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Seattle's a coffee down. You'd see lots of coffee. That's not a good idea. I mean, there's other stuff here. There's, um, what's a fun thing to do if you come to Seattle? If it's, uh, spawning season, salmon spawning season, there's some locks that come in from Puget Sound up to Lake Washington and the salmon go pew, 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 up little fish ladders. So that's, that's fun to watch. It's very Pacific Northwestern. Um, we've got a big, like, semi-open air farmer's market called Pike's Place, which... Who knows when that'll be a good place to go to again. Presumably after it's good to travel. So if you're visiting, you should be able to do that. Um, lots of beautiful parks. It's a nice place. All right. <laughs> Probably says, Rachel's flying. Yep, 17 minutes in. I've read the, I've read the data in. Uh, 112 more variables. Yeah, 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 yeah. User ID, Q1, Q2. Excellent. Okay, so, oh, interesting. This is not the same as the data that we got. It looks like it's been encoded different. Uh, as I remember, let's see. Let's just really quickly look at a distribution of Just look at the histogram real quick. I think that's gonna be the fastest way. Uh, yeah, so it looks like in our, um, original data we had a lot of zeros and here it looks like we do not so i think the encoding is slightly different um we had about forty-seven thousand in the other one as well so i think it's the same data with slightly different encoding which makes me very glad that i asked for the encoding so uh all right let's see what did i do the first time let's see what i can can cannibalize uh, no, code reuse is a good thing and a time saver, and we should all endeavor to do it. Uh, yeah, let's actually just run through here and see what it looked like at different points in time. Data key, data subset. Yeah, okay, so let's just really... Uh, quickly look at the columns in the data key. Um, so what I did was I went through and I picked by hand. Actually, I think I just need the first row. Um, I picked by hand the questions that I would like. So this one is the y'all question. It's question 50 in my guessing. Let's see if it's actually question 50. So that would be in here and then 50. Uh, so I want the question, how would you address a group of two or more people? Okay, yeah, so it looks like that one is correct. Uh, and then it had uh, nine possible answers in the original CSV file. So how many t answers does it have in our raw responses? Uh, what is the names of raw responses again? Do, do, do. Mm -hmm. Q50. All right. Uh, so let's just get a summary of raw responses and then we want the column Q50. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this goes from one to 10. Uh, and I believe that the. Uh, I believe that the data key uh, went from, for the first one, went from, oh, no, okay, so it's just the the answers to the question. Okay, and then I think we indexed from zero at some point when we went into Python. Maybe. No, there were zeros in the original data set. So this is, this is a different encoding. Oh, okay, good to know. Um, ba 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 ba. So what do we need to do? Let's take some time and think it through and take a drink of coffee. Hmm. Uh, it is, it's 9 a.m. for me. It's 9.20 a.m. for me. So this is a very reasonable time to be drinking coffee. I know it's uh, later at night for, for some of y'all. 
All right, what do we need to do? We want the output to look like. Zip code. City, state. Uh, and I'll probably do those off camera again because I'm, or at least check the file off camera because I, I want to make sure there's no PII in there that I'm accidentally exposing. Um, and then we want the uh, questions, the target questions. Target questions with text answers is what we want. So the reason that I want the answers to be text, ugh. No zitch. The reason that I want the target uh, answers to be text rather than numbers as they are here is because I am going to train an encoder, a label encoder, to take that text and map it to a specific number. And then when I train my classifier, I'm going to use that encoded data. And I'm also going to save the encoder. So when a user is using the bot, they'll have answered all the questions. I'll take the questions, encode them using the same encoder. So if y'all was three when I trained my classifier, it'll also be three for the person who responded and not just like a random other number. Uh, and then we can use that input into the classifier and it should work nice and seamlessly. Uh, but to do that, I need to train the encoder separately. So I want them to be text answers uh, because that's the input that I'm expecting from my users, if that makes sense. Um, I mean, that's what I'm going to do regardless of whether or not it makes sense, but it does make sense. Uh, okay, so. Uh, -ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. Uh, so what I really want is the target questions with text answers, and I want the text answers to be correct. That's my goal. So how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing I think we should do is we should um, select rows with target questions. Uh, the reason that I want to, nope, not rows, columns. Select the columns for the target questions. The reason I want to do that first is because, oh, and participant ID. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get city and state. Uh, the reason that I want to select columns, actually, I don't need zip code. Peace out of here, zip code. I never use you. Uh, zip code is a postal code in the United States. The reason I want to select the columns with the target questions first is this is like a 47,000 row plus data set, and I want to get it as small as possible, as quick as possible, just for um, my happiness and also my memory um, constraints. You know, it's sort of like, it's like a SQL query, right? Um, it's nothing like a SQL query because you can't control the execution of SQL query orders. It's a, uh, yeah, it's like a SQL query if you can control the execution of your SQL query. Um, if you were querying a database one query at a time, because I don't know, there, there's no reason why you do that. Don't do that. Anyway, uh, but what I'm saying is if we can make our data as small as possible, our query will be more optimized and faster and everyone will be happier, including me. So, we have the list of questions. I've checked one of them and that looks right in the data key. So I'm going to read the, I don't actually need this. And I don't actually need this. This is just like scratch work. I do need that to limb. Uh, what I want to do is I want to read in the data key and I can just copy and paste that. Um, so the data key is something that I did by hand uh, and it is a list of the questions that I want. But uh, I know it's already read in. I don't know why I read it in again. So it's in local memory. Uh, I picked the answers by hand in the order that they were in. I don't want to do that. I want them, I want the data key to be the answers in the order that they're in, that they're indexed as in the encoded responses. Okay, so do I want that? Okay, so there's there's two things I need to do. So the first is um, 
changing responses. And the second is Do I need to change the data key? No, I don't actually need to change the data key. Why do I not need to change the data key? I don't need to change the data key because once I have the answers to the questions, so the, the information that we were looking for, the answers to the questions in the order that they occur in, exists in this data file in the choices section. Yeah, yeah. So I don't need to worry about that. I need to read in the choices uh, because the file that I want already exists and I don't need to make myself upset. Not upset. It's just why would I spend time doing something that's already been done? So choices. There we go. All right. Uh, okay, so that's the data file that I need, and now I'm going to need information from both of these to combine to make my final responses that I am targeting. Okay, I, I'm on board with myself. <laughs> I figured it out. Mm. Alright, more water. So... Mm, okay, uh, so I can get rid of this section. Uh, so I need participant ID uh, and the target questions with text answer and I can ignore everything else for now. No, nope, I said I didn't need the data key. I do need the data key. I need the data key to know which questions I am targeting, okay. Duh, except it's a good CSV, so I don't need to. Uh, it's just called, oh, it's called question key. All right. All right, in that case, I'm going to call it question key here as well, just to avoid confusion. Okay. So, uh, what do I need to do? I need to get the get a vector with the names of the target questions. All right, and that should be pretty easy. That should be uh, target questions equals, uh, and I know I've done some of this in the other file. I'm doing it in a second file because this way I'll only have to rerun this file if I've done everything in order as opposed to like having to do like a weird mismatch between the two scripts. Um, and that's just, that's just confusing data science. Don't do that. I mean, you can, but it'll make your life harder in the afterwards. Uh, so it's in question key, oops, too much Python. Uh, question key and then the column is question number I'm pretty sure let's take a quick peek at that 20 levels all right uh, and then I need to uh, lowercase the whole thing R Convert list to lower key question blah 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 blah. blah. Mm -hmm. Oh no underscore. All right, and now when we look at target questions, uh, excellent. And the reason that I want it to be uh, uh, lowercase is because the questions in the raw responses, the column heads in the raw responses, are also lowercase. At some point, I'm going to have to re-uppercase them probably because um, my modeling code assumes that they're uppercase or go through and change my modeling code. Uh, one or the other. But that's a problem for future Rachel. I'm definitely going to forget and it's definitely going to be a bug and I'm definitely going to be like, why doesn't it work? And it'll be this moment in time and you guys can send me screenshots of it and I'll be like, yeah, I guess. All right, because you see if I look at Q... They're, uh, they're all lowercase. Okay, so it's 
Sorry, I've forgotten what the participant ID uh, was called. User ID, okay. Uh, so I want user ID. And then I will later use user ID to go get the city and state combination. But right now I don't care about it especially. So uh, I just wanna make sure that I grab it. So what we wanna do is we want to get, um, we have our target questions and then we wanna get, um, I don't want to say filtered because that uh, implies a row-wise operation and we're doing a column-wise operation. Uh, so there we go. Selected raw responses. We're going to take raw responses. And then we're going to select just like SQL and we're going to select target questions and the uh, user ID column. Oh my God, there's trailing white space. All right, uh, that's okay. We can just real quickly. Nope, nope, nope. Why is the white spacing off? Weird. Uh, janitor from the janitor package, use the clean, I think it's called clean names. Oh, do I not have janitor installed? Let me double check that I spelled that right. G-A-N-I-T-O-R, G-A-N-I-T-O-R, I realize that's a J. Uh, C-L-E-N underscore N-A-M-E-S. Yeah, no, I don't have janitor installed, so. Da -da -da. Janitor. Fabulous, okay, now this should work. Great, uh, and now this should work. Oh, is the problem in target questions? No, I just want, there we go. Yeah, okay, target question has leading space, so I'm just gonna quickly remove all of that. Uh, I thought it was strip, that might be a Python thing. Bilingual problems uh, are strip white space. Uh, Robbie says, I'll try Danitor. Yeah, I like Janitor. Mostly I use the clean names function. Uh, da, 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 stripping space from strings. Uh, trim white space is the command. Trim white space. Yeah, there we go. And now, um, oh, is it? Now here's a question, is it the leading zero? Is that what's given us ye olde problems? Well, let's just quickly look at the names. I'm pretty sure it's the trailing, uh, the leading zero. Yeah, yes, it is. All right, so we need to strip the leading zeros. So yeah, these are definitely different preparations of presumably the same data. Um, interesting. Uh, Robbie says uh, a string split. Uh, yeah, I might use something from Stringer because I'm already in the tidyverse, and it'll be a little bit more. Consistent is the word that I'm looking for. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, no worries. Not a problem. So we need to remove leading zeros. Uh, hmm. <laughs> uh, stringer R remove character. All right, so string, oh yeah, string split is, is stringer. Sorry about that. Da, 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 da. All right, uh, and then from here, we need to do string replace. Oh, actually remove, I think, will work. Uh, and the thing that we want to remove is, we want the pattern, and the pattern is Q, and then match space, one, zero, and then, yeah, no, just one, zero. 
Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> Regular expressions are strings, as it turns out. All right. Did I get it in one? Yeah, sure, for sure did not. All right. Um, maybe it's curly brackets as a match group. <laughs> no, it's definitely square brackets. What is the match group? However, hmm. Let's pull up the docs. All right, so the underlying implementation comes from stringy. Regex, yes, 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 arguments, blah, 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 blah. Search boundaries. Oh, that's a da 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 white space. Sorry, so what I'm specifically looking for is I want to match part of the string. No, I want to match the whole string and then only replace some of it. Um, which is the frustrating part. Oh, sorry, this is probably too small for y'all to read. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> this is a specific fixed pattern. Fix. This is a locale aware text lookup. All right. I think that's what I'm looking for. No examples, so that's not good. Uh. <laughs> uh. Let's see. Let's look for stream partial match. Might be what I'm looking for. Listen, Buster, if you're gonna, I'm talking to my computer. <laughs> if you're gonna act up, I'm gonna turn you off and on again. Uh, there we go. All right, we have a whoop, uh, stack overflow, any character, underscore zero, only matches as far as the underscore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. String split, fixed equals true. Uh, not a regular expression, stringer. Hmm. Oh, oh, no, this is, uh, this is quite simple, actually. So I need to, I'm trying, I'm making my, it's way more complex than it needs to be. So all I need to do is replace Q0 with just Q. I think that's the much easier, much easier thing to do. There we go. And then if I look at it, it should work. Yeah, there we go. Wow, I made that unnecessarily difficult, huh? Uh, all right. Uh, Robbie says, I 90% see solutions on YouTube. I don't like to read text, I'm so lazy. That's fine. Uh, I definitely think there's a lot of variation in whether people prefer to see text or video stuff. I would say that's why I do both. I have not written a blog post in a while. <laughs> no, that's not true. I did write the blog post for the announcement of the Raza survey. So if you are uh, interested, please take it. It'll make my life easier and it also help us uh, make Raza more useful. 
all right, now we should not have these answers, these weird things, all right, and then when we look at selected responses, uh, yeah, excellent. Da -da -da. Uh, lots more rows, 10 more variables, here's the ones we've got, excellent. Uh, and user ID, and actually I want user ID to be first, so I'm gonna put that up here. And also, just because it's bothering me, I wanna, <laughs> I want to sort, uh, I want to alphabetize this list. Um, actually, I think it's a vector. Let's target questions. Uh, yeah, it's a character vector. So, R alphabetize uh, character vector. Is it important? No. Do I need to do it? Absolutely not. I just, it'll make me happy, okay? Uh, uh, can I just do order? Let's find out. I think I can. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I did something very wrong. Uh, I know what I did. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, so it looks like you can use from GTools mixed sort. GTools. And now if we look at target questions, hopefully it'll be sorted and then I'll be a happy Rachel. No, for sure ain't. Huh. <laughs> oh yeah, I see. So package these tools successfully unpacked. Hmm. Why didn't you load? Warning message. Yeah. Cause it's a double colon you do need both of them they're not optional all right and then the reason i still got numbers is because it was still doing the order nope 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 yes fantastic okay uh, again not important at all just makes me happy uh and then selected raw responses should be all in order and happy and i'll be delighted yeah nice okay uh and i see no zeros which is good to know all right, what are we doing now? So we have all of our selected responses. All we need to do now is take these numbers and turn them into text. And I think that'll be about what we have time for. So we've got 15 minutes left. Uh, all right, so we have choices loaded in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the match the question ID, which here does not have a leading queue, with, hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with the number of the answer and then replace that with the input. Um, and I believe, I believe we should not have any IPA because I believe I removed all questions that were pronunciation based because eventually I would like this to be a, um, a voice assistant. We worked on uh, getting it connected to Alexa a while ago. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to pass the, um, uh, um, certification because I'm doing the NLU with Raza rather than Alexa's Raza and Al Alexa's Raza NLU. I'm doing my NLU with uh, Alexa, doing my NLU with Raza, not Alexa. Alexa would prefer that I use Alexa. Uh, and as a result, I don't think I'll be certified, but we'll find out eventually once it's done right now, again, the, uh, the classifier does not work. <laughs> so it's a quiz that gives you wrong answers, which I guess could be fun as like a, I don't know, to like one of those, like, which French fry sauce are you or whatever? Uh, the best French fry sauce is mayonnaise and I will fight people on this. I also just really like mayonnaise. Not Miracle Whip. I'm not a Miracle Whip person. Family and a Miracle Whip family. I appreciate the appeal, but it's just not for me. Uh, all right, so we done that already and now we just need to uh, replace these numbers with answers. How are we going to do that? So we have choices. 
And then we have in choices. So this is a little bit of a tricky operation because for every column, we need to look up a chunk. Hmm. So there's, a re there's some great ways to do this in like quadratic time. I don't want to do that because it's, it's big, right? There's 47,000 plus rows. So even though there aren't that many columns, um, if I do some nested for loops, things are going to get pear shaped extremely quickly. Um, also, this is R. We don't use for loops. What? <sighs> if you use a for loop in R, Max Kuhn pops out of your computer and is like, and leaves. He doesn't do that. Uh, he just notoriously has, was like a five year streak maybe where he didn't use any for loops. Mm. You can tell the coffee is working because I'm getting much more distracted. That wasn't empty. <laughs> I just poured it right on me. Well, rip. <sighs> What's a good way to do this? How did I do it last time? I think I did something with the uh, last time was a little bit different because I had like a JSON string and I think I just maybe I did do a for loop last time. Let's see. To a list. Only get questions we want. Yes. Convert. I did. I used a for loop and it was like, don't do it. All right. Um and then I had all right, so I had a function where select the participant answers numeric, select the answer key for the question text, get the corresponding answer. Quick demo. Okay, so, boop. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's probably because I haven't loaded in all the data. Uh, noted. Also, there were, as you can see here, fewer rows in the original data set than the data set that we have here. Um, so different data sets, different encodings. Uh, but we don't have to start from scratch. So I think I am going to use my horrible hacky thing that past Rachel told present Rachel not to use. Haha. <laughs> you can't tell me what to do. I'm also you. Okay, so participant answers. Target question, data original. Did I hard code what data frame to look at in the function? <laughs> sure did. All right, let's, um, uh, whew. yikes. Uh, all right, so let's, do this. Target question. Target question from there. All right. Uh, I also have this data resp list. Did I make that in here? Where'd that come from? Mm. So this is a function. I would not call it an especially modular function. Where'd you come from? Mm hmm. To the previous one. <laughs> so this is a list version of the string of answers that I put together by hand instead of just asking for the data dictionary the first time. The most important thing you can do as a data scientist is get the right data first, which means usually sending emails. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, I should probably also pass that into the function as opposed to what I'm doing now, which is, ugh. All right. Uh, oh, also this is a list. All right, so I'm just gonna get rid of all of this. Peace out. Uh, What's that for? Why'd I put that there? What's that doing? Don't know. Mm. 
Okay, so what is this doing? Index of answers as numeric participant answers underscore question. What? This is some funky nonsense. Okay. Uh, is it worth rewriting? I think it might be worth rewriting. Okay, so let's do that. Um, so we're going to do this column wise. So we're going to go for the target data frame, which is our target questions here. Uh, we're going to take our target questions. We're going to select all of target question. All right. So if we had target questions, we do select all, select all of, no, sorry, select all of, there we go. And then the target question, so let's do, I guess, Q050, I vaguely remember that being a string. All right, what's that look like? <laughs> All right. No, I don't think we can use this. I think we're gonna have to restart basically because I don't think the data structures are similar enough that this will work. So, <sighs> all right, so let's do it column wise. So for each column and we'll just do it in that. Uh, so for each column, we are going to select one of the columns. So. almost did dot head, that would be incorrect. Da, 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 da. There we go. All right, let's do Q14. Uh, so we're gonna select Q14, which does not have to be. Sorry, I was whispering there. I said, right, uh, this is the incorrect thing to get into. All right, so here we have Q14. Um, then what are we gonna do? We're going to get for each row, so from choices, Poorly behaved keyboards get turned off and on again. What is up? I might need to replace the battery. Uh, it's wireless because I have it in like the, the drawer of my desk that I took the front off because otherwise my hands are too high and it's bad for my shoulders. All right, so from choices, we're going to filter. Uh, and what? are the columns and choices. <laughs> uh, question ID. Uh, needs to exactly equal Excellent. Uh, so the reason I'm doing this, this here is when I turn this into a function, uh, the name of the column has a Q in it. I need to remove the Q. So that's all I'm doing here. Uh, so actually let's do this like uh, target question and then uh, let's just pass in Q14 uh, for testing purposes. Testing purposes only. All right. Oop. 
All right, now this isn't a string anymore also. So if we tell it not to be a string, that should also help. Target question not found. Jiminy Cricket. Fantastic. All right, so we have four answers. Uh, and then we just need to say from here, oh, I'm going to need to go back and rewrite all these answers, huh? Um, that's okay. Is it? Uh, so for our quiz, for this question, we have, uh, I think it's actually law. Instead of saw, so we have boy and law are the answers, and then other. <laughs> Uh, and as you can see, these answers here aren't the same, which is not a problem for the classifier because I'm training a new one. It is a problem for the data validation in our assistant because I am looking for the specific answers. So that's a thing we're going to have to fix in the future, but that's okay. It's not a problem for me right now. It's for me in the future. Okay, what are we doing now? So choices, filter. And then we need to replace for the target question mm. really absolutely loving this like four second delay with my keyboard it's great and i'm very pleased with it all right so that's what i think i was doing in the other one that i can maybe use some of so what was i doing uh, down here in functions. So you do down a key. Target question. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm taking, mm -hmm, I see what I'm doing. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this selected raw responses thing. Uh, so uh, let's say numeric answers, right? And then, nope. Uh, and then I am, uh, and then let's call this text answers just to make it clear what I'm doing. Yeah, all right, so run all of these real quick. Ooh. All right, and then what we are doing is we are taking the numeric answers. No, 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 we're taking the text answers and then, which is actually, it's not gonna be the text answers, it's gonna be What are we, so we're indexing into the other thing, right? Uh, so let's actually just see if this will work. I don't think it will. Yeah, let's see where the error occurred. Can't subset using class of, okay, so text answers value, I guess. Numeric answers. Okay, so numeric answers is the number. We want to use this number to index into this list, right? So we get the first one, the second, the second, the second, the second, the second, the third. So one, second, 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 third, right? Uh, and it's not working because invalid subscript type list. So what if I just say as numeric, <laughs> numeric as new, there we go. Maybe that'll work. Eric list, uh, maybe as vector to so create it to change it to a vector. Oh wait, it still has a, a column, right? So, so 
Yeah, so it's a tibble uh, with one column. Okay, so I think this will actually work. So what this is doing is it's just saying, hey, instead of the whole data frame, use just the tibble. Unknown or uninitialized column. Mm hmm. Interesting. <laughs> uh, Snoopy says, oh, poor future, yo. Yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, hey, line coding, welcome. So, okay, so what is this? This should be, hmm. Okay, so I wanted to look at the column Q14, and it is not. Did I do this the other time? I think I might have. <laughs> Filtering, but that's row wise. Um, all right, so we know at this point, where are we going? So we know at this point here that we are going to have a tibble uh, of one column. Uh, so can I just convert that to a vector? No. Hmm. Uh, okay, oh, there's definitely a way to do this. I think it's like extract. Let's see. Extractable column as vector. Extract a dplyr tibble column. That's exactly what I'm looking for. dplyr is the um, is the package that I'm using here. Uh, pull. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, can I just do pull for the whole thing or does it need to be given a column? No. All right. So we're getting new errors, which is great. And then actually from here, I think we'll make our lives a little bit easier by selecting just the value column. All right, positive, positive column indices must match the number of columns. Hmm. Okay, how did I do this last time? Uh, so for those of you who are just tuning in, I'm basically redoing an analysis um, or redoing data cleaning with a different version of the same data set that has um, things that I want in it, like the correct data dictionary, so I know what the answers are. All right, a little water. Okay, so what did I do? Answer key, index of answers. I get the answer key. Yeah, so that was the list of answers and it was shorter than the long thing. And then this was uh, just the just the index into that key. Um, hmm. So text answers. Yeah. Oh, maybe it needs to be value. Yeah, okay, so it's definitely that. Excellent. Uh, great, I think we're ready to do this for all of our columns. So, uh, so it is a, what should we call this? Uh, 
unencode responses, I think makes sense. Responses, there we go. Uh, and it is a function. What the heck is the syntax for functions in R? Yeah, oh, no, I have it, I had it, okay. I'm just, I'm just freaking myself out here. And then I like to put the curly braces like so. And I realize that not everyone does and Sorry, <laughs> sorry if you don't like it. Uh, function, and then what are we doing here? Um, we need the selected row responses. We need the target question. Boop. And we need the choices. Great. Uh, and so from here, we should be able to do run that real quick. I oh, know. And encode responses, target question. Let's just do Q14 because that's what we've been doing. Nope. Yep. Uh, and then selected row responses is just selected row responses and choices is just choices. Um, but I'm passing them in instead of hard coding what they are like I did last time because that's less good. All right. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. So that looks good. Uh, now all we need to do is write a loop. Uh, Maybe look away at this point. <laughs> uh, and let's actually just do the first like couple rows. So this isn't, doesn't print out a whole bunch every time. Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, Robbie says parentheses. Oh yeah, for when I was having problems with uh, uh, the function giving me uh, an error. Yes, thank you. All right, excellent. So what are we doing now? Uh, now we just need to apply this over our data set. Uh, and as I believe, I actually wrote that loop, uh, convert answer index to text answer in a horrible hacky way, do not do it scale. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this whole thing. <laughs> I mean, try this at home, but maybe not at work. All right, we can get rid of that. Excellent. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, da, da, da. All right. So what this is going to do is it's going to create an empty data frame um, that I'm not specifying the dimensions on. And then uh, using my new unencoding responses to get the answers to that. And then uh, add the, <laughs> that column to the empty data frame using CBind, which you should not use. Uh, and then uh, rechanging the column names to, uh, I think target questions is probably the, the better column name. Uh, what does the empty data frame look like at this point? Because I think I actually want it to have the participants in it by zero. Yeah. Uh, so uh, instead of empty, it is going to be target questions underscore participant info. Uh, just so I already have that in, and I don't need to add it in at the end. At the end. Boop, 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 boop. Quickly check out the head of the target data frame. Sorry, target questions. Right, target questions is the wrong thing. I actually want selected raw responses. That's the one. Uh, user ID is the one that I am looking for. So I'm creating a data frame and then adding uh, a columns to it, column by column. Which is not too bad because I think I only have like 25, 26 columns, but not that does not scale, <laughs> uh, particularly because of the way that R does memory allocation. Uh, selected raw responses, user ID. All right, let's give this the old college try. Column Q050 does not work. All right. Uh, 
Yeah. You know what would help is probably if we use the correct column uh, from the uh, correct data set instead. Twenty one warnings, all right. Uh, but what does empty data frame look like? That's the question. Hmm. That ain't right. That ain't right. Oh, that question is definitely the wrong question also. Well, okay. So I think we will pick up on this next Wednesday because uh, this Friday I'm gonna be out and I'll, I'll post on, on YouTube and Twitch about that as well so y'all are reminded of it. Um, Yeah, something's up. So some of these here, the output is just false, which is not what we're looking for. Some of them it's NA, which again, not what I'm looking for, not what the users are gonna respond. And some of these questions are not the correct questions. So um, this looks peeny wally. I don't know that this is the right encoding either. Cause I don't think Peeny Wally should be super common as an answer. Although they could be sorted by location. So maybe this is just folks from the Peeny Wally area. I've never heard that. Um, that looks okay. Roly Poly, yes, we definitely asked that question. Kitty Corner. Kitty Corner seems extremely common and it's not that common of a term. Ugh. And then the one about um, casket and coffin is absolutely incorrect. Like that's not a question that we should have. So it looks like our indexing is wrong as well. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's not great. So uh, let's give myself a little to do. Uh, what do we need to do? Well, actually, let's do. Let's give ourselves a little to do. We need to um, check the indexing for every question. Oh, I've lost my. Uh, for every question, we've got. Incorrect questions in here. Um, we also need to double check the answer indexing because uh, it's possible that I've done something wrong, but um, some of the distribution of answers here does not look correct, just to my informed peaky. Um, Robbie says it's uh, a drunken woman in Hindi. Oh, interesting. Uh, Aman says, any advice for starters in NLP? Uh, that's a really broad question. Um, the um, uh, Jurassic Martin, what's the book called? Speech and Language Processing, I think. Book is a nice place to start. And it's available for free online, most of the chapters. Double check the answer indexing. Uh, and that, okay, there's no way this is right. There's no way that this is right. Uh, tonic and lemonade are not that common as names for soda. Something's off. Okay, um, so the good news is that we do have the data. The bad news is something is wrong and I don't know what it is, but we will get to the bottom of it. Um, not today. <laughs> <laughs> not today. Today, uh, I'm gonna call it a day. I've got other things to do. I got stuff to film for Monday. I'm gonna do a, um, the next NLP for developers is gonna be on ways to make transformer models smaller because they tend to be chunky. Uh, also other announcements, 
the Raza Developers Trophy is out now. We've announced it on Twitter, on our blog, on our forum post. It's pinned at the top. Uh, please take it. It'll be really, really helpful for us. And we're also going to be open sourcing the anonymized answers. So um, you'll be you know, contributing to a, a data set that you can use as well if you're interested. Uh, and L3AI is coming up. So if you haven't heard about it before, it's a completely online conference that uh, Raza is running about um, it, the uh, assistants that are are good. <laughs> I don't know. I s I'm struggling, y'all. Um, the Level 3 Assistance Conference. So these are contextual assistants um, that sort of like remember the history of the conversation and change their behavior based on that is basically what L3 means. Um, and then we've got some more information about the five levels of conversational AI if you're interested there. Uh, yeah. Uh, register. It's going to be uh, on Thursday, June 18th. Uh, we would love to have you. All right. Thanks so much for joining today, everyone. I hope you found this helpful or entertaining or at least a, a nice distraction. Um, if you've got a long weekend, enjoy it. And I will see you all next Wednesday.